Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. It is an honour to stand here today, and um, as mentioned, I will be sharing my time uh, with the member from Brampton Springdale. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I am so pleased to move second reading of Bill 114, an act to provide anti-racism anti measures, uh, which I'll be referring to by its short name, the Anti-Racism Act of 2017. And um, I want to start by acknowledging, uh, Ms. Madam Speaker, um, that we're gathered here today on the traditional territory of the Mississauga of the New Credit and uh, give thanks and uh, recognition to the historical significance of the history of the Indigenous uh, uh, Métis and Inuit people of this city, but also this region and this country. Um, I'd also like to take a moment, Mr. Speaker, to uh, Madam Speaker, this is a switch, <laughs> Madam Speaker, just to uh, recognize and uh, acknowledge uh, the guest here today. We have guests uh, who have contributed so much uh, to get to this point uh, here today uh, in regard to this bill. Uh, Mr. Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, I stand here today to talk to you about how we can make this province the best place to live and prosper and to be happy. Uh, not just for a privileged few, but for all Ontarians. We live in a multicultural province with a diverse and dynamic population, and I believe it's one of the things that makes this province so beautiful. We acknowledge and celebrate people's individual differences, whether it's gender identity, sexual identity, disability, or race. And we have a productive and vibrant society where people are making strides in industry, arts, science and technology. And Madam Speaker, as we celebrate our 150th anniversary, we can see that today's Ontario is a land of diversity, innovation and opportunity. But as we reflect on that history and we look ahead for the next 150 years, we have to acknowledge entrenched barriers and inequities that prevent people from reaching their full potential. Despite all of the progress that we've made here in the province of Ontario, there are many Indigenous, Black and racialized people who continue to face barriers every day because of systemic racism and the consequences of colonialism, slavery and residential schools. I've seen this firsthand, Madam Speaker, how racism, systemic racism affects racialized people across the province of Ontario. It means that Racialized university graduates have harder times getting jobs than non-racialized counterparts despite having the exact same credentials. That racialized children are more likely to end up in the child welfare system in comparison to the rest of the population. And that they are less likely to have the support needed to go from high school into post-secondary education. Madam Speaker, members and colleagues, these examples point to a need for us to understand and deal with systemic racism, which is often caused by hidden institutional biases and in policies, practices, and processes that privilege or disadvantage people based on race. Systemic racism can be unintentional, and it can be a result of doing things the way things have always been done, without considering how they impact particular groups differently. Madam Speaker, it's unacceptable. In the past few months, I've risen in this House to talk about Black History Month and the contributions of Black Canadians, the UN International Decade for the People of African Descent, and the UN International Day for the Elimination of Racial Discrimination. I think all of us have to be aware that the demographics in this province tell a story. By 2031, Racialized people here in the province of Ontario will make up 40% of the population. Two-fifths of the population is a large amount. I said back then, uh, when I spoke in the legislature on these issues, that it's time for action to build an Ontario that's safe, that's inclusive for everyone that lives here. It's our obligation to create a society where racial equity is the norm, so everyone can participate and benefit from everything Ontario has to offer. I want to remind everyone in this legislature that our, our, our province is not immune to racism, and I believe that a shift has taken place. We're hearing more about racist incidents. People are more comfortably uh, expressing their intolerance. 
I believe that if we don't address this, it's going to cost us. And I believe in many ways that it already has cost us. A recent report by CBC found that last year there was a 600% jump in the use of racist, racist language online. The top two areas for reported hate crime in the country are right here in Ontario, in Hamilton and in Thunder Bay. In fact, Ontario, and I think this is a, an interesting piece I think all members should listen to, Ontario is home to seven of the top ten cities for police reported hate crime in the entire country. This gives us per capita the highest rate of police reported hate crime of any province. Of these hate crimes, black Canadians are the most targeted in Canada, and Indigenous, Jewish and Muslim communities are among those who are frequently targeted. The Toronto Police Service's most recent hate crime report showed that 30 per cent of hate crimes in 2006, 2016 sorry, were against our city's Jewish community. Then, there are the headlines we've seen recently. A bomb threat forcing evacuations at Jewish community centres, violence against Indigenous women and girls, to alt-right groups like the Soldiers of Odin and Hamilton holding rallies and marches against immigration. Last month, a 16-year-old girl in the Niagara region had her home broken into and demolished with the N-word written all over her bedroom wall because she was dating one of the, uh, one of the local uh, high school students who was black. I called her, her father a couple of weeks ago and offered my support and thanked him for taking such a strong stand, a public stand against racism. <clears throat> Madam Speaker, when I hear those stories, you know, I think to myself, this is not the 17 or 1800s or the 1900s or the 1960s or 70s. This is 2017 and this is Canada. One of the biggest challenges we have with, in, with racism in Canada is our collective inability to talk about it. It becomes so taboo, most won't address it. I would say even in this legislature, Madam Speaker, we don't talk often about racism and the impact of racism. Even saying the word racism makes people think of pre-1960s America, thinking about things like white hoods in the United States and the crimes that have been committed there, but we don't think about post-9-11 Islamophobia, present-day anti-Semitism, anti-Indigenous racism or anti-black racism. When we look at racism as just violent hate crimes, it becomes a distant problem. But racism isn't just about hate crimes. It's subtle and it's very sophisticated. It's institutionalized and systemic and becomes normalized when we don't talk about it. Systemic racism, racism, in fact, is much more common today than other overt forms of racism mentioned above. Systemic racism is how systems and institutions create and perpetuate racial inequities, often as a result of hidden biases in processes that privilege some groups and disadvantage others. Even if individuals and institutions aren't racist, systemic racism is perpetuated by assumptions and unconscious biases we, um, we have that contribute to racism. This can be a form of systemic racism that inadvertently creates unequal socio-economic outcomes for racialized people that are unfair and preventable. Part of what makes these conversations so difficult is that when we acknowledge that there's a problem, we have to start looking at ourselves and admit that we have a role in playing to ending it. The future of our economy and society depends on our ability to get over any discomforts we have with these conversations and to jump into finding solutions. That's why anti-racism work is so important and it's different from other approaches because it acknowledges that systemic racism exists and actively confronts unequal power dynamic groups between, uh, between groups and structures that sustain it. Madam Speaker, I believe the future of our economy and our society depends on our ability to get over any discomfort we have with these conversa conversations and jump right into finding solutions. And that's why our government created the Anti-Racism Directorate, the ARD, last year, and the Premier gave me the mandate to tackle systemic racism, the kind of racism that is entrenched in our institution and creates barriers for Indigenous uh, and racialized people. 
On March 7 of this year, the government introduced a Better Way Forward, which is Ontario's three-year anti-racism strategic plan, which includes a key commitment to introduce anti-racism legislation. It outlines the concrete steps we're taking to target systemic racism by building an anti-racism racism approach into the way government develops policies, makes decisions, and measures outcomes. We spent last year developing the strategic plan, but this work has taken decades and decades to get here. And I want to take a moment, uh, Madam Speaker, just to thank and acknowledge uh, the people uh, who have been working on um, anti-racism work, not for five or ten years, but for decades here in the province of Ontario. Uh, many of them who are, joined, uh, who are joining us here today. I want to say thank you for the work that you've done, and often uh, the work that they have done have fell onto deaf ears. And to be here today, I think, in the legislature, with the government, with the legislature discussing this and moving forward with legislation, I think it's a, a very proud point for me personally, and I know for many people joining us here today. So we poured over research and reports, such as the review on roots, uh, the roots of violence, uh, the roots of youth violence report, the Stephen Lewis report on race relations in Ontario, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's final report, and our process involved collect, uh, connecting with thousands of Ontarians who shared uh, views with us. We consulted with the public and uh, and impacted communities. And many anti-racism and racialized community groups called for the government to take action to address systemic racism. Between June and December of last year, I traveled across the provinces, uh, the province, and went to uh, 10 uh, public meetings where thousands of Ontarians came forward to share their heartfelt stories with us about the devastating impacts of systemic racism and how racism has impacted them personally. While each individual's experience was different, their stories all confirmed that systemic racism is still and remains uh, to have a uh, devastating impact on people's lives across this province and country. And if we don't address it, Madam Speaker, I believe it's going to cost us even more. Madam Speaker, the call for anti-racism legislation to ensure the longevity and sustainability of the anti-racism work was a dominant theme throughout these meetings. The Colour uh, of Poverty, uh, Colour of Change, a coalition of groups serving the racialized community, shared the draft anti-racism bill to the Ontario government back in October of 2016. This was endorsed by numerous community partners, including the Anti-Black Racism Network, the National Council on Canadian Muslims, and Taibu uh, Community Health Networks, to, uh, to mention a few. We knew that we had to take action to make Ontario more inclusive and a more just province. A better way forward, Ontario's three-year anti-racism plan includes an effort to reduce dis disparities in outcomes for Indigenous and racialized people. We want to build um, a fair and inclusive Ontario where everyone can contribute equally to reach their full potential. And this plan, to change the narrative, to change outcomes, to change people's perceptions on what racism means. Madam Speaker, first, we're going to strengthen policy here in the province. We're going to do better research and evaluation by collecting better race-based disaggregated data, data that can be broken down so we can monitor the impact of policies and programs on different segments of the population. We're also establishing data standards for a consistency. This will help us identify where change is needed to address disparities and outcomes. We'll also develop a method for applying an anti-racism perspective to, perspective to decision-making at the early stage. And secondly, a key component of the plan is the proposed legislation that we're discussing here today. If passed, this, legis this proposed legislation would ensure future sustainability and accountability of our work. We will also to commit to being as transparent as possible and to share the progress of initiatives and targets in this plan through an annual progress report. Third, we will develop and lead targeted public education and awareness initiatives which will focus on anti-black racism, anti-indigenous racism, anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, and other forms of racism against racialized groups. 
And finally, we'll continue to work closely with Indigenous and racialized communities, ministry partners, and government institutions because eliminating system systemic racism cannot be done alone. Our strategic plan has population-specific initiatives to address racism experienced by Indigenous people, anti-Black racism, and systemic racism within Ontario's public service, as well as Islamophobia. And we're going to use a whole-of-government approach, leveraging the work of other ministries. And once again, I just want to take a moment to thank the ministries that were involved in this process, um, because um, there were many ministries that stepped up and offered their help uh, to look for ways to tackle systemic racism. We're hoping to make an impact on the disparities that we see in child welfare, in education, and in the justice system. As part of our commitment to address anti-black racism, we also introduced Ontario's Black Youth Action Plan, the single largest investment into ensuring the success and bright future of young black children here in this province, which I think is a milestone that we can all be proud of. The Ontario Black Youth Action Plan will help eliminate the disparities between black youth and non-black youth at home, in classrooms, in the journey to po towards post-secondary education, in youth justice, and in the workforce in Ontario. The government is also taking responsibility and action to end anti-Indigenous systemic racism and eliminate barriers facing our Indigenous communities. We are working with our Indigenous partners to close gaps, remove barriers, support Indigenous culture, and work towards truth and reconciliation. Madam Speaker, since last year, we've come a long way, but there's no question in my mind there's much work to be done. In the long term, we want to change people's hearts and minds and the inequitable outcomes for racialized people in this province. In the short term, we need to implement steps that will start the ball rolling. Our government and our Premier is completely committed to this work. That's why we've developed the proposed anti-racism legislation. We recognize the critical work of the Human Rights Tribunal of Ontario and the Human Rights Commissioner, uh, Commissions uh, under, um, that they undertake under existing law. We wanted to recognize, however, that proactive anti-racism work needs a new foundation in law. The proposed legislation requires government to establish tools that will help address systemic racism. Bill 114, the proposed Anti-Racism Act, is a key component of our anti-racism strategy, and if passed, the proposed legislation will give teeth to this three-year strategy and future strategies. It holds us as government accountable and ensures that anti-racism work will remain a priority for the government. It would solidify our commitment to identify and combat systemic racism. It would make a very important contribution to our work to build an inclusive and equitable Ontario for all. Mr. Speaker, I want to say that the proposed legislation would position Ontario as a leader in this country in the fight against systemic racism. The purpose of the proposed legislation is to establish and maintain a transparent and sustainable mechanisms to identify and eliminate systemic racism and advance racial equity in Ontario. And if passed, it would enable and set a sustainable approach to anti-racism across government and a wide range of public sector organizations. The proposed anti-racism legislation, if passed, would ensure the future long-term sustainability and accountability of government's anti-racism work through the development of measurable targets, public reporting, and mandating community engagement through renewable multi-year strategic plans. It would require the government to report publicly on the progress of its anti-racism work and remain accountable to the public. The proposed legislation would also give the government the authority to mandate race-based data collection and the use of anti-racism impact assessment frameworks across government and designated public service organizations. This regulation-making regulation authority allows government flexibility in implementation. 
We would consider evidence and consult with affected organizations before mandating race data collection and use anti-racism impact assessment frameworks. The proposed legislation reinforced and increased awareness of the government's commitment to fight systemic racism and ensure that everyone in Ontario has the opportunity to reach their full potential and to participate equally in society. The proposed Anti-Racism Act includes four main components. First, the establishment of the Anti-Racism Directorate. Second, the requirement for government to maintain an anti-racism strategy. Third, a requirement to develop anti-racism, anti sorry, to develop race data standards. And finally, a requirement to develop an anti-racism impact assessment framework. The anti-racism directorate would be established to assist the minister in carrying out these duties. Establishing the anti-racism directorate in the proposed legislation is important because it would provide a home for the anti-racism work to continue. Uh, Madam Speaker, I want to take a moment to thank the dedicated staff from the anti-racism directorate who are joining us here today in, uh, in the gallery. Right here, the men and women who have been working for the last year to build this. They have, let's give them a big round of applause. <laughs> they have worked so hard over the last year. <clears throat> I want to remind our visitors to the gallery and in the East Gallery, we welcome our guests, but you're not allowed to participate in the debate, including clapping. So I'll return to the minister. <laughs> <laughs> Madam Speaker, it's such a passionate issue, and people are so involved in this because it's such an important issue, but thank you for reminding us. Um, but they've worked so hard over the last year, and I've seen it firsthand, um, to uh, build the proposed legislation, the uh, three-year strategic plan, to ensure that we as a government and members in this legislature can move forward to create an Ontario that we envision. So thank you so much. The government will be required to develop and publish anti -racism an anti-racism strategy and set out initiatives to eliminate systemic racism and advance racial equity. The strategy would include targets and indicators to measure progress on the strategy, and it would be required to be published. And, Madam Speaker, to keep this work relevant, the strategy would be required to be reviewed at least every five years, um, at which time a new strategy would be issued. The existing strategy amended or existing strategy continued. It is important that stakeholders and community partners have input into our strategy as a government. The proposed legislation requires the minister responsible for anti-racism anti to consult on the development of the strategy and, as part of the comprehensive review, must occur at least every five years. And these consultations would occur with groups most impacted by systemic racism and others interested in the topic. Having an anti-racism strategy and reviewing it based on consultation will keep it current and responsive to people's needs. The proposed legislation would enable the collection of personal information for the purpose of identifying and monitoring systemic racism and advancing racial equity. Given the sensitivity of race-related information, the proposed legislation also includes strong privacy protection to prevent the misuse of personal, in personal information and, at the same time, um, or a high standard that current privacy laws such as Freedom of Information, the Protection of Privacy Act, and the Municipal Freedom of Information and Protection of Privacy Act. In addition, the proposed legislation provides an oversight role for the information and the privacy commissioner. These privacy rules would only apply if an organization is collecting personal information for the purpose of this proposed act. The minister would be required to develop and publish data standards subject to the lieutenant governor's and council's approval and ensure that public sector organizations are collecting data with an aligned approach to further specify how they must protect personal information. Additionally, the Information and Privacy Commissioner and the Chief Commissioner 
Commission of the Human Rights uh, Commission would have to be consulted on the development of any potential amendments of the Minister's data standards. The LGIC would have regulation-making authority to mandate the collection of race-related data by government and public sector organizations for specific programs and services. These organizations would be required to collect data as outlined in the data standards. This regulation-making authority allows government flexibility on implementation. We know this will be a change to the operations of public sector organizations and want to make sure that we have an opportunity to consult with, with affected organizations prior to requiring them to collect race data. Collecting disaggregated race data is especially important in areas where anticipated gaps in outcomes for Indigenous and racialized people as compared for the general public. While we have indications that Black and Indigenous children have more interactions with child welfare, for example, we need data so that we can identify to address the issues through evidence-based decision-making. And, Madam Speaker, this is an important piece within the legislation. This information will help us better understand the impact of programs and policies on different segments of the population, and it will help us identify patterns of biases. The minister would be required to develop and publish an anti I'm sorry an action oriented ARIA framework subject to cabinet's approval to be used in assessing mitigating and preventing the potential adverse impact of policy and programs on racial equity the ARIA would need to include information on processes for research and analysis stakeholder consultations and public reporting Cabinet would have the regulation-making authority to mandate the use of the ARIA across government and entities for specified programs, services, and functions. We have looked at the successful impact of assessments in other jurisdictions, and this framework would help us build an anti-racism approach into decision-making and plans, making it easier to prevent and remedy systemic racism. So, Madam Speaker, in closing, this proposed legislation commits us to developing tools that will help us identify systemic barriers and promote equitable outcomes through our policies and our programs. I believe that this proposed legislation, if passed, will go a long way towards eliminating systemic racism in the province. Systemic racism should not hold anyone back in this province from reaching their full participation, for reaching their full um, um, their full potential and participating in society. We have an opportunity today to adopt proactive measures to eliminate systemic barriers that cause or help people to perpetuate systemic racism and the inequitable outcomes it creates. The proposed legislation will help us accomplish what we set out to do in our anti-racism strategic plan. And if passed, the proposed legislation would ensure future sustainability and accountability for our work, which will make a tremendous difference to the lives of so many people here in the province. I believe that all people deserve the best this province has to offer. We want to build a fair and more inclusive Ontario, where everyone can contribute equally and achieve their full potential. And I want to leave you with this last thought. We're all in this together. We have a chance now to make a real difference. By working together, we can build a, a province where race doesn't matter and doesn't limit anyone's social, economic, and political opportunities. As we celebrate the 150th anniversary of this country in Ontario and the qualities and values that define us, let's make it as a legislature, as, as MPPs, as a government, let's make this year meaningful by taking a stand on racial equity and social inclusion, because that's who we are. I want to ensure that all the brightest minds in this province have the support they need to be competitive in today's market and to reach their potential. It's time that we, as a legislature, work together to boldly stand up for all people in this province, to build an economy and the society that we need for tomorrow.
This piece of proposed legislation gives us the cur courage to build the gaps between the vision we have as a country as a beacon for multiculturalism and inclusion and the reality of intolerance faced by racialized people. I want to ask all members to come together and pass this proposed piece of legislation. And I want to thank everyone for listening today. Thank you very much, Madam.